I think we should um, tell the audience how uh, this collaboration works. Basically, we run a joint laboratory. Um, all the graduate students and postdoctoral fellows have two mentors. They, they don't have one mentor. So Joe and I co-mentor everyone. And, um, and we meet with the, when we meet with our students and fellows, 90% of the time we're both in the room together. Uh, very frequently, we give them opposite suggestions, like rather phosphate buffer or a tris buffer, and and uh, and the, the clever ones will do both. Uh, but um, the fact is, um, we we some we frequently argue about the details of an experiment, but never about the general direction of where we're going. Um, we obviously both share a, a, a certain worldview of science and how it should be done and, and the rigor of science. Um, and that's something we absolutely share. Um, but we do uh, argue about details sometimes. The, um, a lot of the students and fellows, um, when they first come in, they try to play one of us off on the other uh, when an experiment doesn't work to say, but they rapidly learn they can't do that. So anyway, that takes them a little while to figure out. But, um, but one thing I think um, from uh, some of our early experiments where we saw these enormous changes when we were comparing normal and FH homozygote mutant cells sort of taught us a lesson, uh, especially in the type of uh, work that we do, that, that we always wanted to focus on large changes. And a lot of our students and fellows when they come in uh, wonder why we don't pay attention to certain results when the changes are less than twofold in particular experiments. And so that's one thing that we have learned that both of us really uh, try to teach all of our students and, and postdocs about the focus on the large changes. You'll never be able to work out a mechanism on the small change. Well, you know, at, you know, when we have our research conferences and the students or postdocs present to our research group, Joe and I always sit in the back of the room. If we can't see the change from the back of the room, we're not interested in it. Um, but the fact is, uh, I want to say something else about um, collaborations. Um, when you do get a, an exciting result, you know, the, in, in my opinion, the, the, what makes a result ex exciting is that it opens up a whole new area of investigation. The, the most exciting results, they may solve one problem, but if, if they're really exciting, they open up a whole new line of inquiry. That's what makes a result exciting. Like when we found, did the experiment with FH homozygotes and found they couldn't bind LDL, suddenly there were a million more things that we could do to, to, to work that out. Well. The excitement when you have somebody standing right there with you and you're looking at the machine that's reading out the results and you see um, these all or none changes and immediately you're, you're you, this dialogue of, of, of how, what are we going to do next and um, you know it just makes it, it, those moments which you know maybe in the 40 years maybe we've had I don't know 20 of those moments maybe. So there are a lot of interesting stories that we don't have time to tell, but um, I would say about half the time that we've had um, exciting results, one of us has usually been out of town. We always, for about the first 10 years, let me just say, we would meet every Saturday and Sunday and plan the days, uh, the week's experiments for the next week, the way we had it set up in our early days of working in cultured fibroblast, we would always get our assays, um, if they were started in the morning, um, we would always have the results by 4 or 5 o'clock each day. But in order to really move ahead, we had to plan experiments uh, ahead of time. So we would sit down on a Saturday and Sunday and plan every experiment. In those days, we only had, uh, we had a tissue culture technician and one technician that did a lot of the um, biochemical assays. And about half the time uh, when a result would come out, one of us may not be there. And if it was an exciting result, we would always track the other one down, no matter where they were in the world, to discuss the experiments and 
and go forth. And so that was, I think that's a memorable thing of our um, early days of our collaboration. I can tell you what, what the difference between Joe and me is, okay? It's very simple. Uh, when we used to look at, through a phase contrast microscope, look at cells in a dish. Like right now. <laughs> um, you know, right, there we are. Um, I would uh, go to the microscope and zoom into the very highest power because I really wanted to see the detail of what a cell looked like. And then Joe would step up and immediately zoom to the lowest power to see what the pattern of it all was. And I think that that, in a way, uh, uh, really uh, expresses that we do have slightly different focus. You know, we, we, the partnership couldn't survive if we were both uh, identical. So obviously, each of us has some tendency to think in some different but highly complementary way. And um, that, that works out very well. We're very different in terms of our personal um, likes, too. Joe is a great connoisseur of art and, and uh, um, has a wonderful art collection, and I collect grandchildren, so. Uh. <laughs>